What's going on there guys? Good evening. It's late. Yes, it's late, but it's the Earthmaster here with an update video on this beautiful Tuesday evening. Sometime, well, somewhere it's Wednesday morning for some folks out there. July 12th, 2022. It is about 9.45 p.m. Uh, California time. We have had quite a day in the earthquake department. Let me tell you, a lot of broad large-scale movement all across the Pacific Plate, including areas around the Easter Island, where we've seen a large 6.8 earthquake. That's rather large for this area. The uh, little um, rift zone out there seeing that large earthquake activity. I, it doesn't really get much larger than that. So it's uh, been quite a while since we've seen a 6.8 out in the Easter Island area. Right now, the latest quake shows a 4.0 into the area um kind of looks like Nicar nicaragua area let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here on the map stand by for just a second while i pull it up there is the latest activity uh, again usgs kind of skimpy on the reporting here uh, for the earthquake activity we'll go ahead and check out the emsc model real quick stand by for just a second uh, we'll pull these guys up here there we go there's the latest earthquake activity here on the map Again, most of the activity, the large scale movement confined to the Easter Island area where we're seeing quite a bit of uh, swarming following that 6.8 uh, earthquake activity earlier today. Let's go ahead and pull these guys up here real quick along the East Pacific rise. Again, this is a separation boundary here of the, uh, the Pacific plate area. Um, 6.8 is a considerable size earthquake for this region a lot of times we do see some sixes in this area but to almost see a uh, seven pointer is um well it's it, it's somewhat rare somewhat rare uh for this area this is the historical data uh for this region let me go ahead and pull up the earthquake since about 1900 or so again the majority of these quakes between 6.0 and 7.0 on the magnitude scale here uh, right around the Easter Island area again there's some separation boundaries here of the plates and uh, that's kind of where this struck here right in the center of this this kind of blank zone see that there hasn't been a whole lot here since about 1900 so uh, kind of filling in the gaps so to speak in terms of uh, uh, earthquake activity here in this region so, so far we have had a, uh, uh, stand by for a second, let's fill this up here. So far we have had a 6.8, followed up by quite a few fives and some upper fours in this area, northwest of the Easter Island area and the East Pacific rise. So again, this activity should technically, if, if you're really looking at it, should heighten the movement here along the Peru Chile Trench uh, due to the separation here of the plates. And that's kind of what we're seeing. We have seen a 4.7 striking this area along the South America region uh, following this activity here in the Easter Island area. Um, so I expect, I, I really expect to see things really kick up here along the South America region. But uh, so far, like I said, so far we're just looking at a, uh, a 4.7 in the Peru area. Very shallow earthquake though for a 4.7 at about 10 kilometers for the default level. Um, a little odd, yes, definitely a little odd in terms of earthquake activity within this region. Um, should, could we be looking at something larger in this area? I, it's hard to say. Um, Look at that, it's kind of weird. I zoom in here and we only got four earthquakes. Where's the, where's the 6.8? There we go, a little odd. It kind of disappeared from the map. Um, yeah, well goodness, not for sure what's going on there. But uh, it's a rather large earthquake and uh, I don't think it gets much bigger than that. I don't think it will reach above the 7.0 magnitude quake level in terms of the rift, uh, the East Pacific rise area. It, I mean, it's not a subduction zone. It's not a major area. 
that would accumulate a huge amount of stress, such as this area along the South America region or uh, Northern California northward. So uh, I think that's about it as far as large-scale movement goes. But man, it's it's been pretty active there for sure. Uh, 2.5, the latest quake in the uh, Markleyville area of California. A very shallow earthquake at negative 1.4. That's a very shallow surface earthquake here. And we're talking about right at the surface. Uh, this area has seen a little bit of seismic activity historically up there through the eastern part of Sierra Nevada. And uh, through about last year or so, and the year before, we've seen quite a bit of swarming up there. We did see, uh, I think this is the area that we've seen a 5. Point, uh, was it 5.7 or so, south of the Lake Tahoe region. 2020 2021 somewhere around there it's hard to keep up with the gate uh, with the dates let me tell you but uh, today pretty shallow earthquake activity up there in the sierra nevada the all scale or at least the all magnitude moment uh map here no major swarming to report northern california northward uh, a little activity around the lancaster area of the San Andreas Fault and down south here as well. But uh, Pacific Northwest, relatively quiet. Hawaii lighting up a little bit here tonight uh, with some movement around the Kilauea Volcano. Looks like a 2.2 near Volcano, Hawaii. Um, no major changes though to take note of as far as uh, volcanic unrest at the uh, volcanoes there across the Big Island. So main story, I think the main story right now is this, uh, this earthquake activity around the East Pacific rise and uh, some subsequent movement here around the South America region. Got to remember westward pressure movement in general, but uh, we do have a split here. So uh, that is adding to the uh, pressure activity here along the Perucelli Trench as noted. So we need to watch the South America region following uh, all this activity there along the East Pacific rise. Definitely an area to watch pretty closely. Uh, the Puerto Rico region, southwestern Puerto Rico, uh, look pretty typical there for the swarming activity. Check out the tremor activity tonight along the Cascadia subduction zone. Looks pretty quiet, not a whole lot going on, unfortunately. Um, very, very, very quiet. Looking at the Yellowstone seismographs here, of course we do see the uh, the 6.8 showing up here on the globe and some S waves kicking up there across the uh, Yellowstone area. That, uh, hold on, let's make sure we got the latest map. Yep, That activity is definitely noted across the region here. You can see that uh, signature pretty, pretty broadly there. I mean, that's... 6.8 is a pretty large magnitude earthquake, um, but it did show up across the park there at Yellowstone pretty significantly. Looking at the uh, space weather events, looking at uh, still a pretty good heightened chance of a proton event, 10% chance. X flare remains at about 15% chance, 99% certainty with the C flare and M flare remains at about 40% chance there. So we do have a possibility of a G1 class storm coming up here on the uh, July 13th time frame. Uh, that is tomorrow. So watch for that pretty closely. Uh, far as significant flaring activity goes, it's looking kind of uh, minimal on the scale right now, but we are popping with some C flares. No major M flares to report, but again, these things can pop off uh, just like a piece of popcorn there when you're sizzling it on the stove or in the microwave or wherever you want to cook the popcorn. I, I don't know. You can cook it in the barbecue. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of kind of looking pretty uh, active as far as the sunspot movement goes. Uh, and it's flaring pretty, po uh, flaring pretty uh, rapidly. 3055 looks pretty active. And 3053, the main culprits. But 3057 behind here on the eastern limb is pretty active as well. These ones are earth facing, so we'll watch those pretty closely for any uh, possible significant flaring. Uh, and we'll see what uh, see what becomes of the uh, sun flare activity. All right, guys, have a good day, um, stay, or at least a good night. Stay safe out there. Again, this East Pacific rise movement is pretty active. It's, it's really active 
and um, a 6.8 in the Easter Island region uh, is a pretty large earthquake so there's a lot going on below here uh, to produce that uh, rift zone type of earthquake um, might want to watch uh, as I mentioned around the south uh, the Peru Chile trench area pretty closely for some subsequent activity but uh, then again um, I'm not for sure what we got for a volcanic activity out here might be something brewing as well in this area but uh, either way quite a bit of large-scale activity in an unusual zone all right guys have a good night stay safe out there we will chat to you a little bit later on and uh, like I say make sure you guys have an earthquake plan out there things are getting pretty uh, pretty interesting out here on the globe take care folks